Hello STEM enthusiasts, Happy New Year and welcome to the new episode of Scientix TV. Our New Year's resolutions are simple, to give you more STEM, more integrated STEM teaching, content, projects, resources and professional development opportunities for teachers. In 2024, we're going to bring you the latest in European STEAM education through interviews with teachers, ministries of education and industry partners. We will explore the important topics that matter to educators and, of course, we'll have fun scientific demonstrations to do in the classroom. We have two exciting online courses when teachers, uh, where teachers are invited to register at the moment. EU for Oceans and STEAM out of the box. Now, in the former, teachers explore lesson plans and pedagogies that help nurture their students' connection to the oceans through engaging innovative learning activities that are sure to leave a lasting impact. The latter introduces the STEM methodology to non-STEM topics and increases awareness of STEM skills needed for future careers. So this is especially interesting also for history, language teachers, arts teachers, even sports teachers. Both courses are an opportunity for teachers to explore how real world problems can be used to create engaging lessons for the students. Courses are free of charge and last for four and a, uh, five and a half weeks. Now make sure to register via the European Schoolnet Academy portal. Now it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's the event of the year of the scientist calendar and the EU STEM or the education. February 1st is the beginning of the 2024 STEM discovery campaign. And this year we're excited to welcome Life Terra as the co-organizer of the campaign. So we decided it would be nice to get to know them better. We welcome Aroa Gregori, who is Education Coordinator for Life Terra, and will tell us about uh, Life Terra and why they wanted to be involved in the STEM Discovery campaign. Hi Aroa, thanks for joining us. Let's start easy. Can you tell us why the Life Terra initiative and its mission are so important? Sure, thanks Agatha for having me. So we know many people are concerned about the climate crisis and we see that people want to do something, make a positive impact on our planet. So Life Terra is this green movement that gathers citizens, schools, municipalities, the private sector and the whole society to take climate action together. And we mainly do this through planting trees. What we do is to empower people with the knowledge and the tools so that they can contribute and take action, being part of the solution to our environmental problems. Right now, we have planted almost 5 million trees in 20 countries in Europe. But we do not only restore ecosystems by planting trees and increasing biodiversity, we also put the focus on the sustainable education to encourage young generations to learn and act on the climate crisis. So what are the Life Terra activities and what type of resources are available for teachers to use inside and outside the classroom? So we know that many teachers want to introduce sustainability in the schools. So Life Terra provides the educational resources or teaching materials to do it in an effective way. We have created an educational package called Terra Mission that offers teachers and educators the knowledge and the tools to talk with their pupils about topics related to sustainability. For example, climate change, energy, waste, water, trees, and so on. Terra Mission is very interactive and user-friendly. It includes a manual to guide teachers through the materials. It also has games, videos, practical exercises, and activities to do not only inside the classroom, but also outside. In fact, our package is action-oriented. We want to empower schools to get their hands dirty and organize their own tree planting activity. For this reason, we have created a step-by-step -step guide on how to organize a planting activity from scratch, from finding the land to selecting the species to plant and then to plant them in the correct way. And uh, last but not least, why did Life Terra decide to co-organize the 2024 STEM Discovery Campaign? Yeah, so we see the STEM Discovery Campaign as an amazing opportunity for teachers and educators to meet their peers, share knowledge and experiences and discover new teaching opportunities. So for us, co-organizing 
the STEM discovery campaign together with Scientix is very important to engage with schools and educators across Europe and beyond and ultimately give them the opportunity to join the Life Terra mission and engage young generations in climate action. So this is why. Thank you very much, Aroa. Thank you, Agada. Now, if you're interested about the resources Life Terra offers to teachers, listen to our colleague, Joanna, who takes a closer look at the resources. Hi, Agada. Yes, I had a close look to the educational materials that the Life Terra initiative has made available through its Terra mission. And if you're also interested, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description of the video. So let me walk you through the landing page. As you can see here, the Terra mission is an interactive course that consists of eight overarching and interdependent themes on top of one introductory lesson and the closing one. And if we go down, we see that the themes are replicated twice because they are adapted in terms of contents and types of activity for the needs of children aged 8 to 10 and those aged 11 to 14. So once we open the lesson, the first thing we realize is that it actually appears uh, on a digital platform. And that means that you can use uh, an interactive whiteboard or your computers uh, to make your lesson more interactive, to help your students engage with the, contact, uh, with the contents actively while you're explaining new uh, concepts such as the circular economy. So let us see the table of contents to understand how one lesson is structured. The first week, thing we can see is that there is an introduction and then a, an instructional part where children learn the main concepts of this topic. And then you have a practical assignment, uh, which is usually problem based so that children can work either individually or in group to solve problems uh, that are uh, hands on and, uh, and real world based. Let us try and get a glimpse uh, of the instructional part of a lesson. So if we click here, we will see that students have actually the opportunity to engage with the content uh, and really grasp the main concepts uh, by interacting with the whiteboard or the computer or whatever you will be using for this lesson. So for example, here the whiteboard asks us uh, which type of economy does our library fall into and why. And if we click on recycling economy, we will see an error. Whereas circular economy, which is the right answer, appears as green. That means that students can come up to the whiteboard and uh, experience, try this, uh, this exercise on their, on them, by themselves. Each theme also comes with a teacher guide and with a worksheet. So teachers are not left alone into structuring these lessons. They are actually given guidance and answers to the exercises that students will have to complete. To conclude, we can say that topics are quite varied and that you can combine them to decide uh, whether you want just a circular economy to appear into your lesson or to use some slides from the topics related to waste and combine them with circular economy. And the overarching message is that all these lessons allow students to connect their learning to real world problems. I would say the most pressing ones and to actually nurture their active citizenship and their environmental act and awareness in a funny and engaging ways. Thank you very much, Joanna. We are very happy to collaborate once more with Life Terra, with whom we closely uh, developed the MOOC that is also available via the European Schoolnet Academy. Make sure to check it out. As part of our series of profiles of scientists and STEM professionals, let's meet Thomas Wellens, who works as an environmental policy advisor for the cabinet of the vice governors of the province of Antwerp in Belgium. Let's find out what Thomas's job is about. Well, as an environmental policy advisor, my job comprises of many different assignments. My main task is to make sure that our vice governors, the decision makers of the province, the politicians, use fact-based science and objective truths in their policy decisions. 
for example, in the management of waterways, in the forest conservation, and in the landscape management. On top of that, I also tried to form a link between the local, the provincial, the Flemish, and the European governments, as well as NGOs and the private sector. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm analyzing and developing new policy positions on nature-based solutions with a focus more specifically on ecosystem restoration. And this means making sure that our governments are working towards a livable, climate-resilient future by investing our forests, the waterways, and our natural areas. And to accomplish this necessary ecological transition, I work together with scientists and experts in the field, uh, with researchers at universities and politicians making the decisions on all levels, but also with the private sector and with the NGOs. If you want to introduce Thomas's job to your students and discover hundreds of exciting career profiles, head to the Scientix portal and check out the repository of STEM job profiles. The link is in the description of this video. You'll find the profiles in video, written or podcast form, so you can use them, use the format that works best for your students. And now it's time for Science in Action with Isidora. So hey Isidora, what do you have for us today? Hi Agueda, we are going to have a demonstration submitted by Anne Maggiossi using the submission form in the description of the video. And for today's demonstration, we're going to make a water fountain powered by a balloon. So this is a very fun and easy experiment that you can do with students that are as young as three years old. So what are we going to need for this today? We need a water bottle, some water, of course, some straws, um, a tape. We are using medical tape. You can use glue or any stronger tape, scissors, and of course, a balloon. Of course, be prepared to have some of these uh, containers, I guess. containers, yes, to catch the water that will go out of the bottle. So we'll start by poking the hole in the bottle. Be careful while doing it. Oh. Poke the hole a bit higher in the bottle. We add the straw, it goes all the way down, maybe like this. We need to seal the opening around the straw so it doesn't release air, so it's very tight. No, you're using metallic straws. Right? Yes, no plastic. Well, and reusable plastic at least. Nice and tight. One above, one below. Keep the air out. So your bottle should look like this. Now we're going to fill it in with water. You should fill it in all the way to the end. Before we inflate the balloon, we will put on goggles because fun is fun is the safest fun. We fill in the balloon and fit it onto the bottle. Agueda, this is better with two pairs of hands, so I will need your help a bit. An example of team effort. And we watch the result. Yes, yeah, so what happens? The water in the bottle has pressure on top and when the that is pushing it down. When we release the air from the balloon, the air pressure increases and pushes the, the water even further down and making it exit out of the straw. This is a very easy experiment that helps you talk about topics such as uh, fluid mechanics, weather systems, uh, as well as air pressure. Thank you very much, Isidora, and thank you very much to all the speakers of today's episode. We're very glad to have you with us for the very first Scientix TV episode of 2024. Make sure to subscribe, 
like and share and let us know in the comments if you have any ideas how we can improve or topic that you would like us to cover in the next episode. And remember to check out the 2024 STEM Discovery campaign, which opens on the 1st of February. We're looking forward to seeing you there and see you next time.